Wolfgang Puck has been called the world's most recognizable chef by Forbes and one of the first true celebrity chefs by Variety. His fame is so widespread that he has become practically a legend in food circles, so it's time to separate the man from the myth. Wolfgang Puck grew up in a small town in Austria where his education in food began early. His mother was a cook, but the family had little extra money, so they ate simple, homegrown food. As he told Life and Time in 2017, when my mother cooked at home, we didn't have a lot of money, so we had meat once a week and ate a lot of noodles. The family had chickens, which meant they had plenty of eggs. They picked wild berries in the local forest and also owned a small pig to which they fed leftovers. As he put it, it was a real farm-to-table lifestyle. In an interview with Luxury London in 2018, Puck recalled, My first real food memory is my mother's hot chocolate. It was quite an ordeal. Milking the cow, skimming the milk, tempering the chocolate, it could take hours, but it was worth it. It's clear that much of what Puck ate as a child was made from scratch, making the most out of limited ingredients. It's no wonder he developed such a unique understanding of food as an adult. Most celebrity chefs have some help getting to the top. Very few well-known chefs come from nowhere. Wolfgang Puck is the exception. Puck's career began when he was 14. Though his stepfather discouraged his culinary ambitions, he left home and began as an apprentice at a nearby hotel. As he told Forbes, the role he adopted in the kitchen chiefly involved the grunt work. By a stroke of bad luck, one day Puck was fired. However, the indomitable Puck returned to work the next day, as though nothing had happened. When people realized what he was doing, the hotel manager was impressed enough by Puck to send him to a new job at a sister hotel. At the end of his apprenticeship, he left for France, where he worked at the famous Maxim's restaurant, where he continued to work his way up through the ranks of the kitchen. By the time he was 25, he had moved to California. After transforming the restaurant Ma Maison from a little-known eatery into a hotspot, Puck started his own restaurant, Spago. Soon, Spago was welcoming Hollywood's biggest stars, and the rest is history. When Wolfgang Puck opened Spago, his first restaurant, it wasn't just the food that made it a hit, it was the innovation. One of his most daring moves was to use an open kitchen plan, something which had reportedly never been attempted in the United States. As Puck told Food & Wine in 2018, Maybe it existed in some obscure part of the world, I don't know, but not in a white tablecloth restaurant where the King of Sweden and the President of the United States eat. The kitchen was designed by his former wife and business partner, Barbara Lazaroff. As she explained in the book Restaurants That Work, the design was intended to create a very homey, friendly, welcoming atmosphere. She wrote, Entering Spago, customers are drawn to the lush, exotic floral displays, the bustle of activity and divine aromas emanating from the open kitchen, and the sounds of laughter and lively conversation in the dining room, the animate rhythm of the restaurant. So here, yeah, the customer could see what is going on? Put them on the fire, we need for 20 people. The open kitchen design was a hit, setting an industry-wide trend that continues to this day. These days, Wolfgang Puck's frozen pizzas are a staple of American grocery stores, and we can hardly complain. It turns out these popular pizzas may never have come to be if it weren't for one customer. As Puck told The Guardian, it all started at his Las Vegas branch of Spago in the 90s. He said, Johnny Carson would take home 10 or 12 of my pizzas at a time. I asked him why. He told me he put them in the freezer and then he can get his chef to cook them. When I knew this, I started half cooking them for him. Soon enough, Puck realized he could sell these frozen pizzas in supermarkets around the world. According to Puck, his frozen pizzas are the best on the market, and maybe that's because they started as items on the menu of his famous restaurant. Wolfgang Puck has enjoyed plenty of critical success throughout his career. However, not every food critic who visits his restaurants is a fan. In 2017, Puck spoke to Eater about how he deals with bad reviews. In some instances, he's called out the critics by name. In the interview, he singled out Eater's own Ryan Sutton, whose 2016 review of his New York City Steakhouse Cut awarded the restaurant only a single star out of four. To that, Puck bluntly said, I know good food better than Ryan will ever learn to cook or to taste or anything. He's an amateur, so he doesn't really know. He also criticized a New York Times review of the same restaurant by Pete Wells, saying that he had placed too much emphasis on the restaurant's interior design in his review. According to Puck, A critic can say, it's not my preference, I don't like this art maybe, but to say the art is not good? If you're a food critic, write about the food. While Puck isn't afraid to call out food critics, he isn't too worried about the impact of bad reviews. As he put it, 
A critic is not going to make us busy or not busy. He to us is totally unimportant. One thing is clear to anyone, Pox certainly isn't afraid to tell it like it is. The COVID-19 pandemic dealt a major blow to the restaurant industry. Across the world, restaurateurs were forced to close their doors for weeks and months at a time, while diners began to prefer outdoor dining. For Wolfgang Puck, this meant making a radical pivot in his approach, as he told Vogue. We've had to learn how to operate in a completely different way. In the end, Puck created massive terraces at several of his restaurants to maximize the potential for outdoor dining. In Beverly Hills, he built Spago Lexterior, which consisted of a giant transparent tent that could accommodate semi-private fine dining and up to 109 people. According to Puck, the new installation was expensive, costing in excess of $350,000. Speaking to Rob Report in March 2021, he extolled the virtues of the outdoor experience and how it feels like so much more than just a pandemic-related emergency measure. He said, The night we opened, I was sitting there for an hour and a half. I said, you know what? I feel like I'm in an outdoor garden. I don't feel like I'm in a tent. I think it's a beautiful restaurant. Maybe because of this pandemic and maybe because we had to build something new, we get new ideas of how to build a restaurant better. While Wolfgang Puck has dozens of his own restaurants dotted around the world, he also enjoys visiting other people's restaurants, too. As he told GQ, there are several international restaurants that make the top of his list. In Hong Kong, Puck happened to eat at the Intercontinental Restaurant where he was staying when all the other restaurants were closed for Chinese New Year. Apparently, it was the best Chinese food he'd ever tried. He said of his experience, After I went there, I thought, I don't have to go out anymore. I could eat here every night and finish all the dishes on the menu. In Vienna, Austria, Puck always visits a small stand called Urbanik in the Nachtmarkt market, he explained. The owner has this little bar and different farmers bring him cheese and ham or someone's housewife makes a great roasted pork. In Japan, Puck loves kicho, he recalled. Every table has its own private room. It was total silence. You don't want to be there with a person you have nothing to say to. Puck also has favorite restaurants in France, England, Spain, and Italy, so it's clear that he's well-traveled, especially when it comes to food. It's hard to imagine someone with a successful business empire refusing to use something as basic as email, but it turns out Wolfgang Puck is one such anomaly. In 2009, the chef told Heavy Table, I don't use a computer and I don't do email. If I have to Google something, I tell Maggie, my assistant. At the time, he said he found technology to be a distracting thing that can draw people away from the more important things in life. As Puck went on to explain, My wife, she emails, she wakes up at 2 or 3 in the morning and she sees the blackberries flashing, all of a sudden she's looking at it and fiddling around with it. Even in 2009, having a business and no computer was incredibly rare. If he's stuck by that practice, it feels like kind of a miracle that he's managed to get anything done. Wolfgang Puck became famous for his innovative food and restaurants, but what does a world-famous chef make for dinner for his own family at the end of a long day? He told Esquire in 2012 that for breakfast, he often skips food, favoring a double espresso cappuccino. As for dinner, Puck said at the time of the interview that he usually cooks for his family. In general, he likes to use fresh vegetables from local farmers markets. He said, We steam them with a little olive oil and a little truffle salt on the top, and if it's beans, broccoli, or asparagus, we'll cook them. Typical dishes at the Puck household include pasta, fish, or risotto. Oh, and in the Puck house, an omelet is a perfect snack at any time of day. One of Wolfgang Puck's greatest claims to fame is his association with the Academy Awards. Puck started cooking for the stars who attended the Governor's Ball back in 1995, and he's been doing it ever since. In fact, he's become a staple of the awards ceremony. Some of the dishes we make have become such favorites that we have to bring it back, like our chicken pot pie, like our macaroni and cheese. Apparently, there's one dish that never fails to appear on the menu at the yearly event. As Puck told Gentleman's Journal, it all started with an encounter with Barbara Streisand. I remember when Barbara Streisand came up to me at the Bel Air Hotel and said, Wolfgang, are you doing the Oscars again? I said I was, and she replied, just be sure to make me my chicken pot pie. Puck explained that ever since then, the dish has become a tradition, with Puck and his associates making hundreds of them for the event each year. Another tradition? Macaroni and cheese with truffle, which he says is a favorite of John Travolta's. As Puck joked, comfort food, that's what stars really want. Believe it or not, when I do the Academy Awards, I do macaroni and cheese, everybody wants some extra macaroni and cheese. 
In 2021, a documentary called Wolfgang about Wolfgang Puck's life is set to premiere on Disney+, Plus, directed by David Gelb of Chef's Table fame. Ahead of its release, both Puck and Gelb sat down with Mashed for an exclusive interview. As Gelb told us, Puck was considered as the subject of a Chef's Table episode, but then they realized that his life story and professional influence were too big to fit in a single hour-long show. Gelb added that the documentary would showcase the difficult journey that brought Puck to where he is today. People think that he was just born at Spago and was instantly a success. It takes a lot of hard work and perseverance refusing to give up, even when the obstacles seem insurmountable. And that's really one of the key lessons that we wanted the film to convey. For Puck, the documentary gave him a chance to inspire a new generation. As he told us, Hopefully, when young kids turn on Disney Plus and see the movie, see the biography, that they're going to say, you know what, if Wolf can do it, I can do it. Puck is undeniably inspirational, and it's safe to say this documentary will show this to the world. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite celebrity chefs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.